Good to everybody, welcome to today's video. This is Jerry from Backcountry Ranch. In today's video, we're going to, how should I put it? Redefine the wheel. So when I first bought this JK, one of the first things that I put in was onboard air. However, I've never been happy with it. The system works well, but it just doesn't deliver enough air for me. So I found a solution. Actually, I found a solution about six months ago, but I'm finally getting around to it now. So about six months ago, I picked up this Northern Ridge Twin Compressor from Princess Auto when it was on sale. And it's going to upgrade my onboard system I got right now. However, it only has 90 day warranty, so uh, kind of past that. It's not even out of the box, but uh, these do go on sale at Princess Auto. Here's some of the specs right there. Cooling, internal cooling fan, maximum pressure 150 PSI. Rated voltage 12 volts, air delivery 6.1 CFM. Let's get this out of this box and have a look. So just as you guys could probably tell by looking at the box, this um, air compressor really resembles another air compressor that's out there on the market. A very well known brand name compressor. There it is. There's all the goodies. Comes with the hardware, which is nice. Let's get this out of the box. This is the bad boy right here. Northern Ridge Twin Compressor. I just popped a switch out right here because the way that this is wired up, it's wired up that you either have to toggle the switch on or off. And kind of like shining a flashlight through and peeking in the holes, see where the wire is going. I know that uh, purple is coming from the pressure switch. So that's probably ground. So the ground's going to the pressure switch, and this is a positive, the red obviously. I'm going to have to hook it up and then put a multimeter on there, measure the voltage, and come in with a different source. Because what I want to do is I want to have my aux beam inside the Jeep that when I press the button for the air compressor, it's going to power it on, not jump out of my vehicle, turn this on, and leave it on, and then I forget it, and then it runs and kills my batteries. So that's what I want to do with that. This is the wiring harness that came with it. Super heavy duty and beefy. I got a bus bar and some other things I'm going to install. So we're not going to run this all the way to the front of the batteries but this is kind of the wiring schematic right here to go to the battery one ground then the ground splits up doesn't really show you exactly but all it shows is the switch being black and purple are the ones that operate it so like I said I'm gonna have to take it apart and uh, measure the power at the leads but uh this is it right here, dual fan, air connection in the middle. This should provide me with all the air that I need for my Jeep. Well, the good news is I might even have the parts I need from Princess Auto inside here. I've got some power fist adapters. I need that, and that was from Princess Auto. All I need to do now is find a 90 degree -er inside here 90 degree female to female what a difference today 21 degrees difference from yesterday this is what I would have woke up to camping but what I need to do Tons of room for that compressor. I was kind of scared there for a moment. I'm also thinking about doing the rear seat delete in this. To do some stealth camping, solo camping when I'm alone in the woods. I'll just sleep in my Jeep. Less setup. I think that'd be ideal. I think I might have to go to Princess Auto to buy some parts because the way this is set up, this hose is going to go straight in. So I'll probably have to go with a nipple out of mine in a 90 so it's upraised. 
So once this compressor sit down flat, I can run the line in. So this is the wire I'm gonna use. It's actually amplifier speaker wire, but it should work. Power ground. Got a heavy duty bus bar right here. Got my connections right here. So I got this trim pulled out. That's my old wire running. I ran it through that hole right there. Just created that. I'll kind of go loop around. So I need to cut this and then tape the wire to it and pull it through. Over at the Genesis system, I'm going to run this 150 amp breaker close to the power source. This project should have been taken care of a long time ago, but you guys know how it goes. You have an idea, I'm gonna tape this together so that I can pull it through and hopefully it doesn't pull out. You have an idea, I say, oh man, this'd be great, I'm gonna do this, and then I always seem to buy the parts. Then as time goes on, it's like, I don't have time for this. I wanna do something else. I wanna do something else, and it's kind of the way it goes. I'm hoping I can pull this through now. Let's see. Oh. oh shit. Don't think I made it. Don't think I made it. So close. All right. Perfect, got it through. Victory cannot be achieved without sacrifice. I'm leaking. That's the piece I wanted to fall out. Let's get that in there. Hold it in place. I also threw some electrical tape on it because if you're like me, you have very little trust in things and uh, it should help prevent it from pulling out hopefully. That is uh I should put some band-aids on there. It's a pretty good gash. This is my ground. I have some a ground bus bar coming in. I'll be in tonight. So I'll have to finish this project another day because I'll have to run errands. This is the old wire that came out. Still good. Coming along inside. Gotta start running the wire. All along, got the body pulled out and run along. There's no carpet in here, which makes it nice. Pull the carpet up in here. It's nice enough outside that I can open it up. Get the garage door open. Coming to the back here, I just disconnected the line. Got the power disconnected. This switch is redundant now. And I'm gonna pull this old compressor out. There we go, and out. I do need this cable, not cable, I should say this hose for the other compressor. Don't get me wrong, this compressor was pretty good, just not rated for what I wanted for. It says flow rate 1.8 CFM. Then I got the new one right here, and the flow rate is 6.1 CFM, three times greater than what this one is. Which means I should be able to have a positive airflow in this tank, where before, if I was filling up to 35 PSI, the compressor would bleed all the way down. So I'm hoping the compressor can keep up plus keep air in the tank at the same time. We're gonna find out once we get it all finished, but first I gotta start mounting the air compressor. And you can see it comes with a template right there. So ideally, I gotta figure out where's the best situation for me to put this. I'm thinking probably 
right there so I could tag both parts or I could go all the way up like there uh, nope I can't look we'll come back and I'll go right about here right about here sounds good Taping it down, efforts that it doesn't move when I start drilling holes. Yeah. Shut her down. News gonna get weak. This is where we find out how close the holes are lined up now. Should be pretty close. I got five out of six. So that's not too bad. I'm gonna tighten them up by hand because we got the good old nut certs in there. We all we all know how nut certs are a friend. So this is the hydro crimper I use. I've had it for a while now. I think I bought it when I was doing the LS swap in the TJ. Got it off of Amazon, relatively pretty cheap. Comes with a bunch of different dies. Comes way handy, as you can see right here. So I ran my battery cable up. Got my bus bar mounted here where all my positives are gonna go. And then of course, we got our cover, right? You don't want those terminals exposed where they can short out, so it's gonna have a cover. But I'm at a standstill right now till I go to Princess Auto, get some more parts because I need to um, cut these wires shorter. I also need a 90 for the air compressor. I don't know what other parts I need right now. I'll figure it out as I go, because I'm going to recycle the air hose. That's going to be the big test. This Northern Ridge air compressor I got from Princess Auto like six months ago. We're going to test how well it works. 6.1 CFM. Triple. It has triple the power than the other one had. So, we'll see. So I know some of you are really into the B-roll, but the last video I had a lot of B-roll and it ended up being over 30 minutes. That's a little too long right now. I'm using my hydraulic crimper here just to get that fitting snug. There we go, we're snug in there. This is my battery. Pull test. Slide my little thing up on there. Grab my torch. Done. Turned out good. I'm just gonna feed that up there where my bus bar is this carpet doesn't really tuck in anymore let me get my parts and butt connectors a 90 quarter inch mpt it should be good All right, shut her down. It's 10 degrees outside, the end of January. Gonna be a perfect night to have a fire, smoke a cigar. Coming back inside. Continue to work on the air compressor. Previously, I just ground it off there, which was fine, but I'm actually gonna put this ground like right there. Just finished reworking the wiring harness. This is the extra wire that I took out that I don't need. Even this is still a bit on the long side but I didn't want to make it too short we're gonna get that installed I've already hooked up 
another piece right here is a 12 volt auxiliary socket i know the jeep jk has one in the back that a couple years ago when i first bought it there's a mode that you can convert the auxiliary to be full-time power which i had a cooler but i find it just doesn't deliver enough power so this way hooked up through here directly to a power source i shouldn't have that voltage drop coming down the line so coming inside the jeep here I got the hose ran, the power is ran. I still got a cover down there, so don't be worried about the positive terminals being open. So I'm hoping this is gonna be a success and all my issues with slow airing up is gonna be over with. Let's just test the system quickly. Yes, it does indeed work. So now we need to figure out the power situation. We have verified that there's a light in there. And I'm going to think that the red's positive full time. And then the purple is going to be positive. Well, I'm going to use this tool that I keep in my Jeep full time. It's like a power probe, but a way cheaper version. And we're going to hook this up and use it to verify our testing. So now we understand how this works. We're going to go clear for people who don't quite understand. So we're going to go off this middle terminal. We see that it's 12 volts. And then this purple one, like I said, it says zero, but it's hard to do with one hand. But I can energize it on the switch. See? Energize it. There we go. And I'm actually quite surprised it's pretty quiet. So now I'm gonna run off that power switch, replace this red wire right there, and we're gonna be good. All right, it's the moment of truth. Let's get this outside, try it out. And uh, I can tell you right now, from the little bit I have around it, this thing is incredibly quick. Everything is wired in place. I'd originally decided to use the switch in case I wanted to turn it off. If I was in the back, but due to um, how tight it is in there, I just deleted the switch. So we're running off of the air cutoff right there, plus the air cutoff in the machine, dual system. The positives are all safely enclosed in their case now. Got the wire up and around there. We're ready to take this outside and try it out. She's a little slick out here. So I got about 50 PSI in there right now. I just have that wire poked up to do some troubleshooting, but I realized I didn't have my one power wire plugged in the switch. That's why it wouldn't work. So let's go over here without falling on the ice because it's like a skating rink. Press the air compressor button. thing is fast. Got my air up tool I built a few years ago. We're going to hook it up, air it down, and see how fast she can fill up. We're all hooked up both sides. Going to start airing down. Probably, let's go 10 PSI. We're about 10 psi right now. Let's see how well it keeps up to fill them up to 35. So I got some technical problems. I got the air compressor kind of pulled up here, but air compressor is not the problem. I got no power here. Problems with the circuit breaker. So 
So now I'm at a standstill. I pulled all the wire out. It's four gauge, four gauge China wire. And I figured it'd probably be good enough, but if those are really running 40 amps a side, well, that's what the breakers are fuses set for. Probably cutting this wire a little thin for the length of the amperage. So the circuit breaker was getting pretty hot. I could just swap out the circuit breaker, move it to the back, keep it out of the way of the engine heat. Maybe that might make a difference, but I got some one gauge coming in and then I got a, a better circuit breaker that we're going to install in the back and we're going to see what's going to happen with it. Because at first it didn't really make a lot of sense to me because air compressor was running and it ran really good. Got up to like 125 and it kicked out and I thought, man, that's kind of odd. Should have went up to almost 150, but then it just would not run and I realized it didn't have power. The power would come on and then it wouldn't come on. And yes, yeah, so we're going to swap all that out and finish this project. Delays, delays. Never fails. There's always something. Always something. It's been a couple days and the new wire just showed up. It's one gauge. And I'm also going to put a meter on this when it's running just to see what kind of current we're drawing. No B-roll. Got to get this done. New one gauge power wire going to the rear. Should have no more issues. I'm pretty sure the issue wasn't the wire, but it was the circuit breaker because it got really hot and then the wire to the post was actually really hot as well. And I also put a new air regulator on, set to 100 PSI, because the other one had a glass bowl and it was leaking. And I want to eliminate all leaks so the compressor doesn't run as much. Back to testing. All four tires are hooked up. Gonna measure the current. Let's go inside here. Says I'm only drawing 42, 45 amps, 50. This air compressor is fast. Yeah, I'm only drawing 57 amps. I don't know why that 150 amp circuit breaker was failing. Looks like we got a little bit of a leak we gotta try to track down. Yeah, we're about probably 12 15 psi. All four tires are connected and filling. There we have it, we survived. Got all four tires pumped up. It's not overly hot. The stainless tube is a little warm. Still got a little bit of an air leak. I need to track that down once I get her back inside. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. She ran good. Now that I uh, don't have a power issue, she works really good. All right, do you know what time it is? It's motherfucking beer time. We got a Greasy old classic Pilsner. Reminds me of my days of growing up in Saskatchewan. All right, shut it down, everybody. Motherfucking beer time. It's another project well done. Pilsner always makes for great camping beers. Learned a lot in this video. In the end, that wire I had could easily carry the current. That four gauge wire. The most member most I'm drawn according to the gauge was maybe like 55 60 amps max so the one gauge wire is a little overkill why that 150 amp circuit breaker was at fault is beyond me um, this is one of these issues where you got to troubleshoot and begin to think outside the box at first I noticed the compressor was running and then all of a sudden it cut out and then all of a sudden it start to click and then kick in again. I couldn't quite figure it out at first. I wasn't sure if it was the 
compressors themselves. Maybe they're maybe the thing was faulty out of the box because I had nothing to go off of, right? And it wasn't until I plugged in that power probe type tester thing, not an actual power probe, but a probe, and I realized that there was no power going through it through that accessory plug I installed. And that's when I realized something was wrong. So I said, thinking, did that circuit breaker trip? But it wasn't. But if I fiddled with it, with the trip button, it automatically started working again. It was super hot. So there you have it, man. You got to be able to think outside the box, troubleshoot the issue, get it fixed. Everything's up and running now. Everything's looking good. Motherfucking beer time. Uh, new compressor's installed. I'm happy. Got it from Princess Auto. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.